Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Today I want to address something that a lot of you vintage gamers might be concerned about. And that is uh, your old NES toaster, the front loader. And it's just having continual problems with reading games and stuff like that. And, you know, the fix is replacing that 72-pin connector. Uh, but I want to show you why you have to replace it. So that you're understanding that it's not just a connectivity issue, it's more than that. So here is the old 72-pin connector that I pulled out of my NES 001, first edition. 35 years old, bazillions of hours of playtime. And let me zoom in on this. And let me adjust the lighting a little bit. So you see the shiny parts at the ends of the connector? That's your contact plating. That's what makes the connection. The duller area is just the metal that's behind the plating. And as you can see from start to finish, the plating is literally just worn away. So you still have a conductor there. It's still a piece of metal. It still conducts electricity. But the consistency of that conductivity has been damaged by the fact that there's no shiny contact plating material in it. And so to il illustrate this, I've got my famous capacitor wizard, which is a, an ESR meter that transmits a very high frequency, very low current. Uh, and it really reveals failures in connectivity. So let me get the camera mounted, and then I'll show you what I mean by t touching between the plated material and non-plated material. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch number one pin here and then I'm going to touch the plated material which is still at the edge of this connector here and we're just going to touch them together we get a nice consistent signal there now let's go a little further back where the game would contact and we can see that I get continuity there but if I so much as breathe we can see that that continuity becomes intermittent and we can just choose another random pin here. Let's do this one. And again, we're going to first touch the plated material at the end here, which is still good. Nice and consistent. Let's go back to where the game would contact. Garbage. Let's do another one. Let's do over here. This one's kind of tweaked looking because it got snagged, but... Contact plating, nice and consistent. Back where the game would contact. Garbage. So you get the idea here. I can just pick out any random pin and go between the contact plating, which is consistent, and the worn off part, which is not consistent. So what that leads to is erratic voltages to the cartridge, erratic data transmission, data errors, pixelation, tiling, freezing, resetting, triggers the lockout chip, etc., assuming you haven't bypassed your lockout chip. So, I uh, got to replace that connector. Now, another point that's very crucial. Uh, remember the old cleaning cartridges that everyone used to buy in the stores, the Dust Tendos? The big neon yellow cartridge with the handle on it that you'd ram in there and you'd work it back and forth after putting a couple of drops of cleaner or alcohol on it. That accelerates the wear process. The reason why is, is because inside that Dustendo is a textured plastic sleeve which fits inside the pin connector here. And you're literally abrading the contact material. And they did that because, yeah, you'd wear that contact material down. It was like burnishing the contacts on a relay. It would work for a little while, and then it would screw up again. You were actually killing your connector by doing this. So instead, what I recommend you guys doing uh, is rather than attacking this, keep your cartridges clean. And what I will do is I'll get good old-fashioned Deoxit D5, and I'll get a Q-tip, and I will wet the head of the Q-tip, and I will swab the cartridge connectors. And the cartridge connectors get cleaned and deoxed, and that will prevent garbage from getting on to the connectors. 
and repeated use will prevent oxidation from building up on the connector. So you got to do that for all you lovers of old NES stuff. And yes, the top loader ones are less prone to it because of the way that they're designed, but they still will die. We just haven't seen it yet uh, in great enough numbers for it to be a concern. But you can go on Amazon, eBay, and whatnot, and you can buy these 72-pin connectors for pretty cheap. This one was about 13 bucks, including shipping. Uh, or actually, the one that's in there now is, this is the original. But uh, I haven't seemed to notice any difference in quality. Like, here's the little box it came in. So, big deal. Probably made in China. We'll see how long this one lasts. But anyways, uh, to recap, these things wear out. If you're getting tiling glitching and you always have to constantly finick with the uh, cartridge to get it to play, replace this. Keep up on your cartridges. Clean them. Use the deoxid method with a Q-tip to swab the contacts. Don't use one of those cartridge cleaner things. They will kill the connector in an accelerated time frame. So, yeah. So all you vintage gamer guys out there that love your old toaster NESs, keep them going. Uh, had this one since it was new. So the fact that it's lasted 35 years is pretty good. But uh, they do wear out. So uh, just... Like I said, you can go on Amazon, you can go on eBay, you can get uh, the 72-pin connectors for fairly inexpensively. It's an easy change-out. There's tons of videos on YouTube on how to change out that connector. I'm not going to make one because too many of them exist. But hope you guys find this little bit of information useful uh, for troubleshooting problems with your NES and uh, the reason why you want to change that connector. Anyways, uh, more to come. Thanks for watching the video.